What's going on everybody? I'm Terrence and this is Bank Ship. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's having a good morning so far. And if you ain't up, like I always say, go ahead and get up, start that grind. Uh, it's Monday morning, that morning that nobody likes, uh, but sometimes you gotta do it anyway. Uh, so I got up this morning, I already dropped off that little load of pipe that I had. Uh, it was easy, you know, it was one little bundle, four pieces of pipe uh, and one pallet. So unload was easy. I uh, went to a Dominion Power Plant down there in, in Chester, Virginia, which is just south uh, of Richmond. Um, so I got that unloaded. was supposed to go back uh, and get a load of insulation, uh, but I can't now. I cannot pick that up until the morning. So they want to do a load and go in the morning. I'm not a really big fan of load and goes uh, with the insulation just because sometimes they take really long. Uh, but getting in in there first thing in the morning uh i should be able to get in and out no problem throw my straps get out of there and that goes to maryland um so got a little bit of time to kill before i get back to the house and y'all know what time it is man good old streaking beacon the old girl is dirty i feel like i've neglected her over the last week, you know, I haven't really been able to stop and get her washed. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today since we got some time. They're not calling for no rain till the end of the week. So we might be able to be clean for a couple days. Um, so this is a, a, a never ending thing, man. If y'all getting in the truck and then y'all enjoy your pride and all that stuff, keeping your truck clean and your trailer clean, it's a never ending process. I got to be telling people, man, I budget. I, I put it in my budget each month. You know, I budget uh, a truck wash a week uh, is, is what I budget. Now, I don't actually get a truck wash a week uh, just because sometimes time doesn't allow it. But if time allowed it, best believe I'd be washing this thing at least once a week. Um, so, yeah, we got one more truck in front of us. It's just a tractor. So they should get him in and out pretty quick. Uh, and then we can get this old girl cleaned up and head back to the house, have an early day. Uh, so I'll see y'all later on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, I was supposed to pick up a load of insulation today, load and go to Maryland. Um, but at first I was supposed to pick it up yesterday and then they moved it to a load and go today. And then yesterday afternoon they called me and said that the equipment at the job site will not be there until tomorrow. So it can't deliver until tomorrow. So I wasn't gonna set around. Um, kind of made me mad because I'm like, come on, man, like get it together. Um, but that's job sites for you. You guys know how I talk about job sites with this insulation all the damn time. Um, but luckily I was able to find a load uh, that picked up in Baltimore and goes to Hagerstown. It's just a little short load, about a 80 mile trip or something like that. And that puts me about 20 miles from where I have to pick up the insulation because uh, I got to pick it up in their other lay down yard in West Virginia uh, instead of Winchester. So puts me closer to that. I don't have to pass Winchester to get up there like I normally have to do. Um, so it worked out good. Uh, but we just got some, uh, got some crates and different various parts of machinery. Uh, comes to a total of about 16.5 on the weight. Um, and let's see, it's like seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. Uh, the heaviest piece is this big piece back here. Um, so got her strapped down. Now we got a tarp. Uh, good thing it's not too hot outside. So we're going to get this thing tarped, get on the road, get this unloaded. Uh, I will say, you know, 16, 5, 17,000 pounds is about what I found uh, if you put up front of this SDX. Uh, 216 it's got a bow in it you know just like regular semi trailers they got a bow for the weight so they're not sagging um, you know that engineered beam and stuff like that um, and I found that if I put about 17,000 pounds in front of the axles um, it'll take that bow out that's about where I see it actually straighten out the trailer 
Um, so, you know, it doesn't sag, doesn't do anything like that. Uh, it takes that bow out and it rides great. Um, you know, that insulation and stuff like that's not heavy enough to take that bow out. So a lot of times, you know, it looks like that I'm riding real nose high because the, you know, the ass end of my trailer is a lot lower and that's because of that bow. Um, but you know, with the bow taken out, everything's nice and level, rides nice and good. So I'm gonna quit running my mouth and uh, get these tarps out so we can get this thing done. I'll see y'all in a minute.
quick little 30 minute tarp job. Not too bad. Ain't my best work, but not my worst. I'm trying to hurry up and get out of here. So that's what we got. I'm actually sweating. It ain't like this right here, but it ain't going nowhere. Couldn't really get it tighter than what it was. So, cause I didn't want to, I don't want to rip my tarp right there. I put like a uh, couple shop rags on underneath of that, but I don't want to rip my tarp. So I don't want to put it too tight right there. So we're going to head out of here. Try to get down these rough ass Baltimore roads back to 95 and sneak past the DOT man that's sitting out there. So I'll see y'all in Hagerstown. a month so I get 20 all right 
So after you divide that by 20, that's going to give you your operating cost per day. So you can leave it there or you can take it a step further and divide that number by average miles per day. That can range anywhere between four and 650, 700 miles a day. Um, some guys say they do 700. Um, some guys say they do less. Nice round ballpark figure, national average is about 600 miles a day. So you take your daily expense, your daily operating cost, divide that by 600, and that will get you your operating cost per mile. So once you have that, say, let's use a round figure like 50 cents. Say your operating cost is 50 cents a mile. Now, you aren't doing that just to pay your truck payment and your fuel, are you? That's not why you're in trucking. No, you're in trucking because you want to make some money. You're in business because you want to make some money. So take that 50 cents a mile and then come up with an average of what you would like to pay yourself. If you want to pay yourself $1,200 a week or $1,000 a week, take that weekly number or that, I'm sorry, that monthly number. Say you want to give yourself $4,000 a month. That's $1,000 a week. So do that same thing that we did with the operating costs. Take that $4,000 a month, divide it by 20, and then divide that number by 600. That's going to get you how much it costs to pay you per mile. <clears throat> so let's say that's another 50 cents. I'm not really doing the math. I'm just using round figures. So now we're up to a dollar a mile. All right. So a dollar a mile will give us or you your your own pay, your fuel costs, your insurance costs, your truck and trailer payment, you know, your equipment payment, insurance, fuel. I think I said all that already. But that'll give you everything that'll cover you and your equipment. Boom. There's your operating cost. So say a dollar. All right. Now we got our operating cost down. Dollar a mile. Does that mean that you run for a dollar a mile? No, that does not mean. Listen to me. That does not mean because that is your operating cost. That's what you can run for. Some people say, oh, well, that's my operating cost. That's my bottom dollar. No. Absolutely not. Now, the reason, I'll tell you, the reason that you don't use that as your bottom dollar is because you always want to set money aside for your business. You want your business to flourish. You want your business to grow. You want to have a rainy day fund. All that stuff. You got to set some money aside for your business. So even though a dollar a mile is your operating cost, you don't want to set that as your minimum. Okay. So let's say we're going to set our minimum at the $3 mark. No, nah, let's go to 250 because there's a lot of people out there that swear by 250 a mile. Um, me, I don't swear by 250 a mile and I don't take 250 a mile. Stuff is too expensive to be taking two dollars and fifty cent a mile loads. But for the sake of this video, let's say we set our bare minimum to two dollars and fifty cents a mile. That means a dollar of that is going to your operating costs, a dollar fifty is going back to your business. That's not too terrible. It's not terrible at all. Okay. So should you stop there? No, no, don't stop there. That's your minimum. So say now it's time to book some loads. Whether it be a customer or a broker, it's all the same. The only difference is 
Broker's going to be a middleman. He's going to try to take some money for himself or herself. A lot of times, if you get a good broker and you ask for a certain rate, they go back to a customer and they overshoot by fifty, hundred dollars or whatever, so they can make their money. You can still make your money. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Say we're going to book our first look. All right. So we call the broker or the customer about a look. Say it's going. Let's say it's going 500 miles, all right? So you know, you know that your operating cost or your minimum that you're gonna run for is 250, okay? So that means that that's what? That's $1,250 off the jump. You need at least 1250, that's your minimum. 500 miles okay so you can be satisfied with 1250 or you can learn to negotiate now the broker may come back and say I got a thousand dollars on it and you can say uh, mm, nah man I need at least this number now me personally Whatever the broker or the customer tells me that they got in a load, I automatically ask for more money. Even if the load is paying good, I ask for more money. Now, some people may say that's not a good practice or that's being greedy or whatever. I don't care. I'm here to make money. I'm here to run a successful business. I don't really care if somebody's saying I'm being greedy or that's not good business practice it's worked so i'm gonna keep on doing it now that's not to say that if they got twelve hundred dollars on a three hundred uh three hundred mile load that i'm gonna say nah man i need seventeen hundred i'm not gonna overshoot way far i might add an extra hundred or 150 dollars to it and if they say yeah man i can do that cool if they say ah oh, nah i can meet you in the middle cool because i was cool with the 1200 if they say no uh 1200 is really all i got man all right you know what i guess i can do it for 1200 so i'm still getting a good rate now if the rate ain't nowhere near what i need it to be then i'll tell them what i need i know what my minimum is i say what i need they can't get to what I need, then we start negotiating. It's like selling something. You're selling a service. They're buying a service. So don't let them tell you how much your service is going to cost. They're the buyer. Remember that. You are the seller. They are the buyer. So don't tell, don't let them tell you. Don't let the buyer tell you how much the selling price should be you set your price you know your minimum but like i said if you don't know your minimum this makes it a whole lot harder you know your minimum set your price add a couple hundred dollars to that or a couple whatever to your minimum see if you can get that if you can't get that then start working your way down to your minimum Hopefully you don't get to your minimum because you don't want to be at your minimum. You want to make a little bit extra money. You want to make a little bit extra profit. You know, if you're trying to expand your business and stuff like that, that takes money and more money than just what your bare minimum or your operating cost is going to be. So ask for more money. It's pretty simple. Ask for more money. If they give it to you, great. If not, start working your way down. Sometimes they'll meet you in the middle. Sometimes they'll be below your minimum. If they're below your minimum, tell them, you know what? I'm sorry, I can't go below this. If they still can't go up to what your minimum is, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't put yourself in a hard place for somebody else, especially the buyer. Don't go out of business running below your minimum for the buyer you you are the one providing the service you are the one that dictates how much you make not them 
you tell them what you want, they give it to you or they don't, or they get close to it. If you're happy with the rate, take the load. Now me personally, like I said, even if I'm happy with the rate, I still ask for more money just to see if they are gonna give it to me. If they give it to me, great. If not, I'll still take the load because I'm happy with the rate. If I'm not happy with the rate, I ask for more money. If they can't give me more money to where I'm at least satisfied, where it at least touches my minimum, I don't touch it. Plain and simple, <clears throat> you know. And there's also tools. There's tools, I've talked about it before. If you use truck stop, you know, if you use some of these load boards, go down and look at those lane rates. See what those lane rates are paying. Because even if your minimum is $2.50 a mile, or say your minimum is $3 a mile, and they got a load that's paying $3 a mile, but the lane average is $3.60 a mile, you gonna take that three dollars a mile or you gonna ask for 360 a mile because that's the lane average me i'm gonna ask for that 360 a mile everybody else is getting it so why can't i i'm gonna ask for that lane average and the brokers know if, you, if you're using a broker the brokers know they got they use the same things as we do they know what the lane average is paying so when you ask for that lane average if they can't give it to you and the rate's still good, sure, go ahead and take it. But if it's way off that lane average, if the lane average is 350 a mile, and they trying to pay you 212 or 225, get bent. The only way the trucking industry is going to get better, the only way rates is going to get better is if truckers start sticking up for themselves and taking the money that they deserve. And that starts with learning how to negotiate rates. So that's the end of that. Uh, if you guys got any more questions about negotiating rates, feel free, send me a DM, put it down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer if I can. Um, you know, and if somebody wants to debate about what I said, go ahead, put it down in the comments. We'll debate. I love debates. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hope y'all have a good night. And as always, Stay prayed up, grind hard, and stay humble.